Recently I had a project I wanted to do where I was wanted to control two uh, small DC gear motors. So I needed the controller so the, the L9110S looked like the way to go and you can get it in an Arduino type package or it's meant to interface with Arduino things. Um, for just over a, about a buck, a little buck twenty to two bucks, depends where you buy it, and you can buy them everywhere. This particular version is my favorite of the versions because it has um, the capacitance coupling for the motor drives to help take out some of the motor noise. Of course, it's got the LED to tell you when it's powered, but it also has main supply rails filtering. Um, but the one thing that they all have that I find didn't fit my need because I was going to control my device with positive input pulses and these boards are laid out with 10k that's a 10k resistor and that is and that is and you have your four inputs divide the board in half this is channel A this is channel B so these are the two inputs for for channel B and these are the two control lines inputs for channel A and then of course your two outputs here you have ground and here you have your V plus they have these 10k pull-up resistors on the uh, control lines so that you supply a ground and if you supply nothing at all then they're already in a high state in my particular case uh, the circuits that I wanted to control this with produce a high state so I actually needed the reverse I would rather that they'd been pull down resistors or not there at all either way would have worked in this case, it, the way the board's laid out, unfortunately, these are the positive sides of the resistors here, 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 and here. You can actually see the little trace that connects them together. But that same trace also comes right down here to the V plus N, the VCC. If it hadn't gone right there first, it, it'd make it easier to just change them all to pull down resistors because you could just cut that trace there and then you can see where they both are here it trails off this way you could cut that trace and you could cut that trace then you could reassign a ground wire to any one of these and that would all become pulled down but now you've got the problem that you've removed your supply to your to your other chips I mean you can get around it you could solder on a wire from your VCC and come back up and and clean this off and solder on there and clean that off and or just go up here to this resistor and solder on there I guess uh, it just gets a little more messy you get a lot of res a lot of cut traces a lot of soldering and you know how small in real life this whole thing is it's like the size of your thumbnail this big blowout picture makes it look pretty easy so I found the easiest way to change it is just simply to uh, come off these control lines here 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 and here and solder on new resistors which all have one end of the resistors hooked together and go to ground so another imagine ground coming out coming into resistor resistor tree which effectively pulls all of the control lines low and that way I could provide my positive signals that I was going to feed into this device and it works out quite well. The way the truth table for this whole device is, is laid out, that is, if uh, it doesn't matter if you look at the whole device or half of it, let's just talk about half of it. If both inputs are high, the outputs are in an open state. If both inputs are low, the outputs are in an open state. So it works out quite well either way, logic wise. And in fact, logic wise, it makes more sense if these are on a pull down. Because if they're on a pull down and you make them high, then it actually will track. If you made that high, this one will become high. This one's already pulled down, so that one would become low from the open state. And the way it's wired up now with the pull up resistors, if you change this line, it actually changes that output so that the information cross crossfades. It makes it kind of confusing, actually. Uh, the reason I was going to be cr controlling this with some uh, high signals and not low is I wasn't going to be interfacing it with uh, Arduino. I was actually going to interface it with a uh, 4017, which is a 10 stage counter, has 10 outputs, because I wanted a sequencer. I was uh, going to be imitating a toy from the 1950s that 
back then they had the remote control was a single channel remote. In fact, it was a courier tube. It wasn't even a normal remote. But the point is it was a single channel remote and they wanted the robot to be able to, in this case it was a robot, sometimes it was a bus, sometimes it was a car, even a boat. They did it for a lot of different toys. They had a six step sequence. One step, let's say step one was off, nothing was happening. Then you'd send another remote pulse so then it go forward, for example. If you send another remote pulse, then it would turn left. Another remote pulse, you go back to forward again. Another remote pulse, it goes right. Another remote pulse, it goes forward again. And another remote pulse, and it would be back to stop. And they were using a mechanical sequencer to do all that. I decided I'd just use a 4017 and reset the count on count 7. So, just to give you a little gist of it, this little guy right here is like a miniature version of what that 1950s toys looked like and you have a remote here in my hand so when I push this button it gets a signal so the first one is forward if I push it again it'll go into turn if I push it again you go forward push it again turn push it again forward push it again stop so the point is this very inexpensive uh, motor driver you know, if you look up the L911 OS, or this could be 0S, you can't, I can't tell. It's a low voltage can, uh, motor driver. It'll work from 2.5 volts up to 12 volts. Each one of these drivers can handle up to 800 milliamps. I mean, that's almost one amp. And uh, set up like this is considered a, an H-bridge driver. So for anywhere from about a dollar ten to two or three bucks depending where you want to buy them they're just dirt cheap and can save you a lot of room and more efficient than using a, a relay which was my only other option but I just wanted to show that there was a way to use this in a non Arduino device that had a positive control line coming into it instead of the normal pull down negative control line like you would see in Arduino and it uh, works really well